the moral argument for the existence of God has been stated over centuries in a variety of different ways. One way of stating the argument is that if God does not exist, objective morals and duties do not exist. Since objective morals and duties do exist, God therefore exists. The point here is that because every rational person has an objective sense of what is good and evil, right and wrong, we appeal to a moral law, which implies the existence of a transcendent moral lawgiver. In other words, God. People commonly regard telling the truth as right and murder as wrong, or that kindness is good and torturing children is evil. Although ethical differences exist among cultures, virtues like courage and generosity and vices like cowardice and greed are universally accepted. Again, implying the existence of a universal moral law within our conscience. However, moral relativists would argue that morality is based on a person's subjective opinion and choices. They are implying cruel acts like rape, murder and child molestation are acceptable if they fit within one's own preferences. However, that's all flawed. Since all civil societies regard these kinds of cruelties as unacceptable, moral relativism fails in its application and is therefore implausible. Two notable philosophers, uh, Beckwith and Kukul, underscore this point. They say, those who deny obvious moral rules, who say that murder and rape are morally benign or neutral, have something wrong with them. But one could ask why a moral law necessitates a transcendent moral lawgiver? The answer is because no valid naturalistic source of a moral law exists. This means the source has to be someone transcendent or powerful and morally pure, a definition that matches the Judeo-Christian God. J.O. Mackey, a prominent atheist philosopher of the 20th century, once said, Moral properties constitute so odd a cluster of qualities and relations that they are most unlikely to have arisen in the ordinary course of events without an all-powerful God to create them. In Darwinian evolution, a stark contradiction exists. Darwin claimed there is no fundamental difference between man and the higher mammals in their mental faculties. Yet we know that humans explicitly differ from animals by their sense of objective morality. Even atheist evolutionists, such as George Gaylord Simpson, have acknowledged this difference. He once wrote, morals arise only in man. Whilst atheist evolutionists have attempted to bridge the chasm of morality uh, between humans and animals, their natural explanations fall short. What they fail to consider is that natural selection operates only on the basis of survival and reproduction, not on what is moral. As such, an evolutionary view of the world is one in which good and evil do not exist, as peculiar as that may seem. As Richard Dawkins pointed out once, he said, in a universe of blind physical forces and genetic replication, there is at bottom no design, no purpose, no evil and no good. Nothing but blind, pitiless indifference. That's what he said. Yet denying the existence of objective morality is akin to denying the reality of the physical world. It follows that Darwinian evolution fails to account for the existence of objective morals. And in conclusion, objective morals can only be plausibly explained by the existence of God, who created us in his own image with a moral law embedded in our own conscience. The Apostle Paul made this point very clear when he wrote the requirement of the law are written 
on the hearts, that's our hearts, their conscience also bearing them witness.